On opening day in 2009, fans felt nothing but excitement for Diamondbacks ace, Brandon Webb. He had come off his third consecutive season of finishing in the top two for the NL Cy Young Award, and in those three seasons, he pitched 698 innings with a record of 56-25 and and had an ERA of right around 1.50. Webb was looking like the next great superstar in the MLB. However, almost nobody expected that on April 6, 2009, it would be the last time that Brandon Webb would ever take a major league mound. In that start, Webb lasted only four innings and gave up six runs before having to exit with a shoulder injury. And as weird as it may sound, the Dimebacks front office, in a way, saw this coming. Now, before I get into more details, if you guys are new, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell. Also, drop a like if you guys are enjoying what you're seeing, and make sure to let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about Brandon Webb. But without further ado, let's get back into the video. Webb was the 8th round pick in the 2000 MLB draft for the Arizona Diamondbacks, and he made his debut 3 years later on April 22, 2003. Webb's repertoire included one of the best sinkers in all of baseball, along with a changeup and a curveball. Although Brandon Webb had a short career that only lasted 6 years, he still had a great deal of success. He was a 3-time All-Star from 2006 to 2008, and in that 2006 season, he ended up winning the National League Cy Young Award. The only quote-unquote bad season that he had was in 2004, where he had a record of 7-16, but even then, he still had a 3.59 ERA. Also, in that 2004 season, the Diamondbacks lost 111 games as a team and scored the fewest runs in the MLB. So, I think it's safe to say that the record wasn't Webb's fault. Throughout his career, Brandon Webb was in a lot of ways being compared to the Dodgers great Earl Hershiser because of how good he was at forcing ground balls. And Webb could have very easily ended up being like Hershiser. However, there were two main factors that ruined his career. His physical and mental health. In the 2009 offseason, the Dimebacks were ready to extend two of their starting pitchers, Brandon Webb and Dan Heron. Although Webb was clearly the better pitcher, Heron ended up getting his extension and the Dimebacks withdrew their offer to Webb. The D-backs front office explained that they had seen some issues with Webb's shoulder as he was passing his physical exam in the offseason, and they didn't think it was worth risking to give Webb a big extension at that time. This bothered Webb, and although he was still the ace of the D-backs, he knew that he had to prove that he was able to stay healthy in order to get his big contract. And as it unfortunately turned out, the D-backs front office ended up making the right move. When Webb first hurt his shoulder in 2009, the injury was diagnosed as non-major. However, in August of that year, Webb had to undergo shoulder surgery, which officially put an end to his season. At that time, the D-backs still had hope, given how they decided to keep Webb by exercising an $8.5 million option for him in the 2010 season. This, however, turned out to be a poor move because Webb never ended up pitching in that season. The strange part is that in 2010, Webb didn't have any kind of shoulder pain. His issue was that he was having trouble getting back to his old pitching motions. This caused him to have problems locating and creating big time movement on his pitches. Given how he wasn't even at a point where he could pitch in rehab games in the minor leagues, the media started spreading rumors that Webb was just sitting on his extension in order to make free money. And this is where the mental health factor started to kick in. These rumors bothered Webb, and he continued to have issues with gaining self-confidence and getting back on track with his mechanics. And his pitching struggles got to a point where in the offseason of 2010, the D-backs didn't even bother offering Webb another contract. As a result, Webb ended up signing a one-year deal with the Texas Rangers in 2011. For the first time in about two years, he was able to take the mound for the Frisco Rough Riders, the AA team for the Rangers. After four very poor starts in AA, Webb got hurt again and had to undergo a second shoulder surgery, which would ultimately put away his career for good. Webb continued to rehab and try to come back for another year, and then finally, in February of 2013, he announced that he had retired. 
Overall, it is very tough to see a player with that much talent go down and struggle so much. And although his name could have been amongst the all-time greats had he stayed healthy, it is still important to highlight his success in his six-year career. One popular measurement used to examine the greatness of an MLB player is a stat called WAR. This basically measures how many more wins an individual player is worth when compared to his potential replacement at that same position. According to AZ Snake Pit, throughout the time that he was 25 to 29 years old, Brandon Webb had a war of 27.4, which is the third highest of all time within pitchers from that age range. So, despite many people viewing this as an unfortunate career, one thing that can't be denied is that when he was healthy, Brandon Webb was one of the best pitchers this game had ever seen. With that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new. Also, please make sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and I will see you all in the next video.